Okay, so let's continue with Zork Nemesis. Since we were rather close to uh, finishing the asylum area last time. I think it was... Yep, here we go. So, we were up here in the... near the top of the asylum? And we were looking at all these different displays around here. There's... a chart of the phases of the moon. What's over here? Some medical apparatus. I think we'd be working our way around. Yes, this is a journal of... I think that's Sat Satorius' journal. Or that might be his father's journal, I'm not too sure. <laughs> we have these notes here which we read last time. Uh, the Enchanters Guild calling out Sartorius for practicing unorthodox and unauthorized magic. A letter from Sophia about something about their work which is going on. And Dr. Sartorius writing a note to someone. He's got a very scratchy handwriting. Okay. Hmm. There's this little thingy here. Which is actually a statue of the asylum. And that does something. We have these books here. Have I read all these? The Blood Alchemist. Center testing on the miniature models. Repeatedly, reportedly, the miniature hall of the opera Robozica was sent to work as a kind of central control for the greater structure itself. And in fact, the only way the concert hall could be properly lit was by switching on the stage lights in the model. This relationship later became problematic when the diva Maria Callist grew. Okay, thank you. Grew so substantial in person that neither she nor her large entourage could fit their plump fingers inside the miniature opera, and had no choice but to sing a season entirely in the dark. Eventually, Dr. Cobb became so obsessed with the science of miniaturization that he stopped working in the larger scale altogether. His later works grew smaller and smaller until they could no longer be seen by the naked eye. His famous bottomograph bottom bottom or graphical map of the great underground empire carved out of a single grape led to an appointment as state miniaturist. His revisionist rendering of the massive statue of Lord Dimwit Flathead the Excessive, once towering nine bloits high above the frigid river valley, now etched upon a lone grain of rice, is said to be one of the best likenesses of the late. Okay. I think this is in reference to this over here. Um, because, as we'll find out in a bit, uh, this little statue here, once we used it, has actually modified something about the structure itself, so. And this is about the Blood Alchemist. I wrote down some of these last time for the symbols. Yep. Okay. And there's nothing there, and let's go here. Hmm. Uh, zappy. This certainly looks zappy. Hmm. Oh. Ow, you have died. Did you need a hand with that? Oh, okay. Well, we can't press the buttons there. Anatomy charts. Anatomy charts. Anatomy charts. Or anatomy charts. Uh, that's back where we were. Is there nothing else around here? Oh, hey. It's a hand. Hmm. How lovely. What about this? 
It's a brain. I don't know if brains pulsate like that, but okay. Oh, what about the hand? <laughs> Rock on. Okay, do I have anything? No. I think there's something around here which we can get. The stuff. Oh, actually. Oh, hang on. No, that was in another room. Can we look at that? That looks like it would be interesting. There's some books and stuff on there. No? Okay. Oh. Oh, hey. It's a hammer. Okay, we'll take that. Like a reflex hammer, but... Let's go... Here. Boink. Yoink. Let's go put this hammer back. Because I don't think we'll need it again. Oh, it just used it up. Okay. We lost the hammer in the process of breaking that. Sure. We knew the combination for that. Yes, yes. Override. Well, let's go up the uh, ladder here. Yeah, I think the um, I think the little um miniature model of the asylum downstairs there actually lowered that ladder for us. Have a look here. Some books. More books. I don't think there's anything interesting there. Nope. Okay. Oxygen. Hydrogen. And helium. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Canisters. <laughs> okay, it floats off because of the helium. Ah. Uh, there was something we read downstairs about, um... Because we're trying to synthesize tin. So... Let's just go have a look at that book again. Which was over here. Okay, let's see. Given that fluorine is present in this atmosphere, helium raises, oxygen alone is without effect, hydrogen and oxygen build coolie and create water. Okay. So I suppose we don't need fluorine. Uh, we just need helium, oxygen, hydrogen, oxygen? Okay, so let's do this. Helium. Oxygen. Hydrogen. Oxygen. And... No. Do oxygen and helium? Nothing. Hmm. 
Okay, so there's water. And that just drains it out again. Okay. Wait, hang on. That's humming now. Okay, that did something. I think we uh did what we needed to do and in there but it's hot I think or do I have to like pump water in there now to cool it off or something There we go. Okay, oxygen and hydrogen create water. And we can get the tin. So you use oxygen and hydrogen to cool it off because they create tin. So they create water. Eclipse is getting closer. Okay. What do we see now? Hmm. Okay. What do you got to say for yourself, Sartorius? I can smell my laboratory. My asylum. Very good work. What's that? You've learned the truth about Alexandria's conception. You question our methods? That's understandable. The science of alchemy is precise and demanding. So we created a girl whose conception and birth met specified planetary coordinates. She was magical. The most important thing in the world to us. If only we could have saved her from the nemesis. But, you see, I know the secret to bring us, and Alexandria, and Lucian back to life. There is a chance we can all live again. Find the remaining metals. Hmm. Okay. Sure. Well, we've got two more to find, so let's head off to another place. Uh, which one's it going to be? Uh... A 
This place? Jupiron, I think it is. Oh no, this is just back here. Womp womp. Okay. What about the satin like one? There we go. Here we go. Unlike what I used to think when I played this game, we're not actually teleporting to different planets where they're just representations of the different alchemists' uh, sort of home plate, home places. So. Hmm. Oh. It's over here. Oh, wait. We can look down. Oh. Huh. What does it say? In... In Frob we trust. In Wit Oogle... Go... Something or other. Oh, we'll take that. I don't know why it's all blurry before you actually pick it up. Oh, we did actually move forward, but it did update the screen. Heat and light transform the world. Heck of a panoramic view for if, if, it's, uh, if the graphics were better. No. I mean, look at that, you've got. It'd be great to see these buildings in, like, just high res. We see anything else around here? Is there any more coins on the ground? Let me just go back down and have a look. Yeah, can we look on the ground here? Nope. Okay. Nope. Oh, what's this? It's all boarded up. Closed pending final exorcism. Entry is forbidden by order of the Grand Inquisitor. Pursuit to AG Pursuant to AGE Code 1535-47750 slash BCV 56A. Okay. We're gonna have to find another way in. Actually, I think I saw another way in. Over there. There's a hole. Someone's dug in here or something? Donate now. Every Zorkmid brings you prescience from the six gods of emotion. What's this say? Condolences to the family of Father Gothman, who after banishing banished who was banished after muttering in his sleep the forbidden words Hello, Sailor. Condolences to the family of Father Mulligan, who was qu drawn and quartered for ringing the seventh tone to the great implementer out of order. Measures have been taken to prevent such tragic errors in the future. We welcome the Burton family, who has renounced the absurdities of the Brogmoid cult and accepted the wisdom of Zorkrastrianism. Zorkrastrianism. Congratulations to Elvira Flatman, who has won a free plot of land in a new development in the up-and-coming Valley of the Sparrows. And I suppose that's the uh, brothers of this monastery. Well, we have a Zork mid, so it's a. Uh, what's this say? 
Thank the implementers for the generosity of man, man and a curse on all your progeny for stealing from the church. I think I can put this in here, can't I? Yeah. Put that there. Oh, hey, we're going to have a look up and down there. What's up? Hmm. Okay, a person holding a flame. Yeah, one of the things in this game was toted, uh, that was toted was the uh, 360 panoramic view, but you can't actually look like 360 degrees everywhere. It's uh, in specific locations where you can look up and even then you're stuck on a, uh, on the one axis. I think in later games, like Mist 3 specifically, uh, Mist 3 Exiles, that they expanded upon that. But I haven't played any of the Mist games, so... I believe this was the first game to use this engine. And I think the production of this engine uh, took up most of the development time for this game, to the point where people might have noticed that the puzzles aren't necessarily that complicated. No heads. I think we have to... Yes. We have to uh, match up these plaques with the emotions of the heads. So we'll pick up all these. I think there's more than what we need to use here. We'll just pick them all up. You're hearing the implementer's call. Mast and runes mark the way! Above and below the fiery towers. Discovering time and eternity, nothing at all. They call for secrets and hidden powers. To monks long dead. That was the play. Okay. I think we can guess a few of them anyway. That one seems pretty surprised. This one seems angry. I don't think that's a particular face. Not a face I recognize anyway. And I don't think that is either. Or that. I think this one's that because that's pretty flat. This one's a smiling. And eyebrows. They call for secrets and hidden powers. one wide eyes hmm maybe it is this one i don't know what that one's supposed to represent other than possibly someone's back <laughs> there we go mast and runes mark the way long dead that was the play they call for secrets and hidden power above and below the fiery towers well you're hearing the implementers call discovering time and eternity nothing at all okay i'm sure that's useful somehow i think it opened up a door somewhere so. that's a neat picture in here oh hey what are you doing here this, this place is shut down there's evil here evil there's demons everywhere upstairs in the master's room master's gone Who's left to protect me? If I hear one more demon bellow, I'll go mad. It's done. I'm mad. 
<laughs> okay. Well, I think your master is kind of indisposed at the moment. He's he's busy being dead or kind of dead. It's it's rather complicated. What's this thingy? Oh, baptism font? Maybe or perhaps not. Oh, I suppose it is. Cleanse through flame. Protect the innocent and perfect the healing stone. Let the spirit be washed and whitened by the philosophic fire. Okay. I'm gonna make a save. I'm gonna... I don't know. I think a baptism by water is a bit... <laughs> uh... Probably easier. Easier? Anyway. A great. Oh, hey. What's this? Push on the glyphs. Open. Okay. Well, here's another puzzle. And this is rather straightforward. We can see here, push on the glyphs. And then we have these symbols over here. P-U-S-H-O-N-T-H-E-G-L-Y-P-H-S. And we have open up the top there. I'm guessing open is going to be useful. So let's write down open. And underneath it, uh, we'll put the uh, symbols relevant to uh, the uh, appropriate letters. So O is an infinity symbol. P is the fourth one in glyph, which is, or it's the first one in push. So it's that, like, I don't know, cross with a flower bit. Uh, e is stakey thing and N is it's like a face on a cross okay I don't think there's anything behind there I think it was just hiding behind the altar or whatever hmm. another neat portrait neat painting and this one I think I recognize this one most of them are probably just classical pieces of art yeah Okay. Oh, there's a broken bell. Oh, hang on. No, oh, no, nope, I want to go back. It's hard to make out, but there's a series of bells up there. There's uh, seven of them. Okay. Call to meals, wake up, call to prayer, fire alarm, evasion attack, call to Fanucci, the seventh bell. Hmm. These are the same symbols as what was on those plaques downstairs. And I think that was the last one which talked. The, uh, Mining one. So I think the first one was... Let's see how my memory is. We're going to have to remember the order in which those faces talked. Uh, it was angry face first. As he said, masks and runes marked away. And then the next one is to monks long dead. That was the play. Which I think was the eyebrows. Um... 
um and then it was i think it was like this symbol this one and then it was the flat And then through process of elimination, I think it would have been this one. And then it would be smiley. Okay. I like they've got thumbtacks. <laughs> What's up here? Okay. So let's do this. Uh, this one. Then. This one. Then. This one. Then this one. Then this one. And then this one. Climb the rope. Or not? Okay, maybe we only have to pull that once. Hmm, I don't know why we're doing that yet. <laughs> but we've done it. over here what's here brother Gregory brother William brother Andrew Brother Jeffrey. Can we have a look at these ones over here? No, we like... We jump ahead an aisle. The merchant Yorick, himself a simple man, grew dissatisfied with his simple trade, his simple gods, his simple life. Th seeking only truth, he prayed to the implementers and heard nothing, because he could not find... Because he could find no door to the heavens, no portals to the plain of Atri, Yorick himself hid himself in a deep mountain cave and followed a demon down to forking forks, car curving curves and labyrinthian labyrinths that led down into the underworld. The devil, Yorick reasoned, being the devil, would keep less exclusive company. When on the third day, the earth beneath his feet began to glow red hot with fire and a stench of sulfur pierced the air, Yorick quite rightly assumed that he had reached the underworld. As the demon quickened his step, a broad stone door flung open just for a moment in the darkness. When the demon slipped past the doors, Yorick caught upon his cloak was pulled inside. The stone clanging shut just behind him. The air was so thick with black smoke that the devil, Yorick reasoned, could not be far off. But in his path, demons of all sorts, larger and smaller, lesser and greater, wily and woody-headed, pleasant and not thronged towards the most immense demon of all. This demon, surrounded by a great ring of infernal fire, stood between all hell and the Lord of Lamentation himself. As Yorick's demon, a lesser melancholy sort, approached the great demon of the threshold, he drew from his side a bronze shield and hurried past the ring of fire, untouched. But Yorick let go of the demon's cloak with a yelp and fell to the ground. O oh, ye with the faith of a hungus. Miraculously, as a number of demons stopped to heckle in anticipation of Yorick's fiery death, Yorick saw his chance. He plucked a like bronze shield, studded with five brilliant red rubies from the side of a careless demon, and plunged his way into the ring of fire. When the flames touched his shield, they fell to his side, dissipating into pungent black smoke. 
Yorick, armed only with the simple blade of a simple merchant, slew the great demon of the threshold in his surprise and made his way down to the devil, who, reasonably amused, taught Yorick the great mysteries of the cosmos. Okay. Brother Melvo. Sit Yorick. Melvo, sorry. For us to be. No, I actually think it's time for all this to finally end. What are you doing? You're being arrested. For what? Leave him alone. I'm not going anywhere. Please, stop. Leave him alone. Lucien! Why are you doing this? How can you do this? Father, help me! Father, help! Hmm, okay. Didn't seem to be too happy at the idea of them getting married. Uh, what's in here? Tapestries. A door, which we can't open. That painting again. Of the door. Are we like kicking the doors or something? Uh. What's this here? It's a doohickey. Uh, okay. Oh, hang on. These are the symbols which I just wrote down. Hmm, let's see. What was it for open? Uh, it was that. And then... This. And then squiggly. And then sunface. Ta-da! And I think... That opened this. Somehow. Because that's a padlock. I think it opened that. Thanks to industrial strength magic, all objects are protected from theft. Okay, we've got... <laughs> apparently we've got a magical, uh... Magical, uh, what's it called? Security. Thanks to industrial strength magic, it. all objects are protected from theft. What's this say? This room protected by the Troll Tech Anti-Theft System 710, formerly the Froboz Magical Magic of Lance 709. This room is monitored by the Troll Tech Anti-Theft System. Yes, okay. Uh, thanks. I just read that. Okay. I suppose it's noting that I'm reading that. The Presence of Incredibly Weird Stuff Going On by Bizboz. First edition. First known magic spell. <laughs> okay. I like the idea of, a, of uh, a game actually set in a world where magic has really... It, where magic is just discovered. You know, you could maybe see the events occur where magic is discovered and then it's like, holy crap, how does this work? What is all this stuff? Magic Wand, standard issue. Hmm. What's this? Giant Serpent, Oracle of Bags, not the scale. Okay. Ruby from Yorick's Shield. Yoink. Suppose we could just pick that up. Scrolls of Zomdor, spells for. Triplicates? Yeah. B Hourglass facilitates time travel. Okay, they've just got that sitting there. I mean, it's protected apparently by a magical system, so. Can't see what that is. Crystal ball. Period of Moog. I think you can actually just see something in there, but... Or is that the room being reflected back on me? Might be the room. Sacred granola. 
Lovely. Sheath of the Gru Slayer. Hmm. Zork Shroud of Xylon. Okay. It's got like a base on it there. That looks a bit skull like. Legendary Blade of King Entharion. Stick Frot Z by Vilboz the Great. Sorry. Okay, that glows. I don't know how that's useful. What's this? Jewel of Jerrywall, 3rd century BE. Replica, Yorick Shield. Okay. Torch of the Endless Fire. Yoink. It's there, we can take it. What's this? Mythical Universe. Oh, that's, um... Is that our planet? I don't think so. Because it's kind of wrong. Like, I can see Australia there, but it's mashed up against, like, where the... Southeast would be. And, like, there's England up there, and there's Spain there. But... South Africa is, like, missing a huge chunk. <laughs> Weird. Okay. Magic scroll of Bizbos. That's the whole incantation written on there. What's this thing? Hello. Uh, Alarm system deactivated. It was that easy? Okay. Uh, I think that means that we can make off with these items now. Yeah. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I've just got to remember where we've got to go now. Hmm. Nothing over there. We have this ruby and this torch of endless fire. There's like a hidden door we've got to go through or something? Or not? Hmm. What if we go back up here? There we go. You gotta quickly click when you get pulled up so that you can hop out this window. It goes past very quickly. I wasn't entirely sure what I was looking at, but... There we go. Okay. In the bedroom. Painting of flames. Or the fire. Scarf on the wall. Hmm. Is this Melvo's room? Last night I dreamt of a nightmarish ride through.
through the impoverished classes. The dream haunts me. I am dazed by the dirt and sheer noise. My coach tips over and the crowd closes in on me like an egg, crushing me like the grip of earth. Their spit burns me like the fire of emotion. Despair fills me and then air, sweet air, sweet, sweet air cleans away the cloud, crowds. Is this a sign of my fallen state or simply my work? Prozor. That's a lot of chemicals, a lot of medicines. What's over here? Okay. Suppose that's the ghost lady which we saw in the beginning. I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names. Unless it's got like <laughs> the name of the person next to it, then I'm probably not going to remember what they are. Page 15. 925. Dear Melvo, as we discussed, I will bring her to you one week after birth. Do not underestimate the importance of your task. Her spiritual progress and the purification of her soul is essential to the process. She will be a gift to all mankind. Dr. Sartorius. I suppose this is the girl who was born from the artificial insemination we saw in the asylum. Father Melvo. I was much moved by your tale of the orphan child. As a result, in the spirit of goodwill, I have agreed to grant your request. You may take this baby and raise her until she reaches maturity. Yurik be with you, the Grand Inquisitor. Estuary, 16th, 935. Dearest Melvo, I am delighted by Alexandria's process. Progress, I suppose it's Alexandria. I think that your use of puzzles is to sharpen her mind and spirit is working beautifully and already I can see promise in her music I will be saving a seat for her in the conservatory yours truly Sophia dear father I miss you Madame Sophia seems to be paying so much attention to me she believes that in my soul I possess the very power of music and with practice I will find the precious notes which are the harmony of the spheres I'm not so sure. Everyone believes my music is strange. Do you think me strange? I know I am lonely. Always missing you, Alexandria. Dear Father. Uh, this is 9.42. 9.43. It's a year later. I've met someone and for the first time in months I feel optimistic. optimistic. His name is Lucian Kane, and he is the one person who seems to understand my music whenever I... I understand my music. When around him, I don't have to apologize for who I am or what I believe. I finally found my kindred spirit, as you always promised I would. Be happy for me. Your Alexandria. Page 22, 945. Father, there is something strange going on, and I have to get out of here. Lucian wants to marry me. We will come to you at the next full moon. Marry us and give us your blessing for the future. I know you're concerned for purity of the spirit, but remember, not all of us are destined to marry Yorick and live in a monastery. Hey. Okay. Though we saw the uh, ceremony going on downstairs and the father just sort of disappeared when Lucian was taken away by his father. And they are, we, we know that they're all alchemists. It was in a way that they didn't want to get married for reasons. Oh. Haha! <laughs> ah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there is a secret door there. Now that we know it's there, we can travel through. What's this? Okay, a door which we can't open. What's this? A lifetime for some. A lifetime fashioning a desperate hope. Mortality. I can't. Not at this cost. Hell is better. I'll pray. I can still pray for forgiveness. Pardon my sin. Sloth, 
envy, lust, deceit, greed, gluttony. Forgive me. Okay, getting a fair amount of guilt or something. Uh, can we see that book which is on the bed there? Hmm. There's something there, but I can't see it. Something around here which I can use on it. Is there another room over here? No. Doesn't look like it. Is there anything in here? Can't. Nothing there. It's got to get very annoying living here, just hearing the sounds of lava and volcano going on in the background constantly. Ah! Uh. Oh, I don't think there's anything on there which we can take. Nothing here. Poison. What type of poison? Who knows? Just generic brand, store brand poison. Saw that. Did I do anything? Nope. Okay, well, let's head back down. We didn't get anything from that, but we got a bit more backstory. Hmm. Can I do anything else here? Apparently you can only shift that around, you can't actually like lift it up and remove it. So there's something in one of these walls. Oh. No. Okay. Anything in these seats? Nope. I don't think so. These people will keep their feet warm. In school, where we had to sit in the chapel there, the pews had heat bars underneath them. You put your feet on them and they'd warm your feet up. Uh. Okay, let's go back down here. I think there's something else here. What 
do with the carpet? There's a chair which has been knocked over over there. Yes. Okay, so this place. Lost forever. The most sought of objects. This place scared. Hmm. Okay. This place scared the bejeebas out of me when I used to when I would first play this game. Flames were all around. I mean, geez, you come down here. It's dark. There's these two mummies here, which is like the first actual sort of dead things you've seen in the entire game. Yeah. Hmm. It's dark. I'm sure it's nothing though. And of course, this could happen to you. Perhaps you feel like dinner, you have died. Yeah. We were eaten by a groom. Let's light our torch. And of course, there's no groom here now. You may never see what a groom looks like. Yorick. Or you can hear it. It's like off in the distance, but... Hmm. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, we're just gonna hop in here. Move this aside. Hey, look. It's the, uh... It's the shield. Let's put this gem we found into the shield. And we have the actual shield of Yorick, which we saw... Actually allows us... Allowed him to go through fire? So... We could just put the torch there on the... In the uh, what's it called? Holder. I think. I mean, listen to it. The sounds down here, yeah, creepy. There's a whole bunch of coffins down there, but I don't think we can actually do anything with them. And yes, okay. Head on. This is probably like the most overt death you could have in this. I mean, I don't know if you could die in the asylum. Uh, oh, you could die by touching the electrified uh, pad. But other than that, I don't think there was another way to. Hmm. You want to play? Let's Okay, it's fire. You have died. Spoken. Hmm. Okay. We did read about Yorick and how he was wanting to go past demons and all that. You want to play? Let's play. That's about the problem is that you don't really realize what you're looking at. Just use the shield on the fire. Whoop. There we go. Bye. Skulls. Okay, we can rotate them. Did we see something outlining skulls anywhere? Hmm. I don't think I did.
What did you say? As red as rubies was his blood. Lost forever. The most sought of objects. The perfect stone. I think they're just talking about the shield. Okay. Uh, hmm. I don't think I saw anything representing skulls around here, did I? Can't take the magic wand. It's full. I suppose our uh, adventurer here is rather constrained when it comes to pilfering everything <laughs> in sight, unlike most adventure game protagonists. Oh, it glows. Was there something in the books which we saw upstairs? The books on Yorick, maybe there was some pictures in the margins which alluded to this. No. 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 Okay, and I don't know how, like, seeing this is relevant. Gregory, Michael, Andrew, Jeffrey. Is there any skulls around here, which is... No. I mean, there's five people there. Doesn't this do something? There we go. True fear is known only by the very quick and the very thick. An angry man is a righteous man. Oh, it's just a reference to the puzzle which we solved. Boredom is perfect balance without purpose. The road to happiness is paved with good health. The hips curve, the arcing spine, a heartbeat outside your road. In these lie absolution. To the eye of suspicion, there can be no mistakes, only misdirection. Okay. No, that's just like identifying you know these but i mean don't really need that for that they're pictograms it's pretty straightforward there wasn't anything in here was there no so it's just those skulls i'd have to find the 
something which is referencing them. Uh, that's just four symbols. And I don't think any of the others do anything. I mean, you could probably play them, but... Wake up. Sun, angry, bored, and... Like, sun above the horizon. What's that? Sun, angry, bored. Okay. Sun. Okay. Call to prayer. Sun, smile, brows, and that. Asian attack, angry, shocked, and alarm. Call to Fiducci. Comet, smiling, curves, and book. Oh, that was a right. Oh, this one. Okay. Anyway, I don't think any of them do anything. I don't think I've even, I've even seen a room where they prepare meals, so some of the doors are closed, so we're not seeing the entire place. And let's go back here. It's just going to be for the cutscene again. Was there anything down here which represented like skulls? I think I had a look at all, all of the displays and I don't think I saw anything. There is that box there, but I don't think I can look at that. No. Actually, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, I think I know what I need to do. It's just, I need to find the item I need to use to be able to uh, solve the puzzle. Remember that book in uh, Melvo's bedroom, which had the red page on it, which I couldn't do anything with? Well, I'm pretty sure that gives us our solution to the puzzle. However just have to remember how to unblur the image. I can't remember whether we do it by like putting a mirror over the top of it or do we change the lighting in the room or something for that? Let me go back and have a look at his bedroom again. Because, well, jumping ahead a bit that red page actually has a picture of five skulls on it but once we unblur it we'll be able to see which directions they're facing so that we can solve the puzzle this one here but i 
can't remember how we actually uh, did that. Can I close his blinds or something? I do like put something over the top of it, don't I? Like a mirror or a glass. It's not that gem down in the uh down in the museum, is it? I thought I clicked on that. Did I miss something down here? I can't fiddle with this anymore. So I think we've done all that we need to do with that. No way I can go down there. I suppose it's just showing that going down further is blocked off. Is there something on the floor there? No, okay. Well, we kind of balked that. The whole shield's now gone, so... So much for that artifact. I mean, they've got a replica over there. They can still remember what it looked like. Uh, hmm. I mean, I did use a mirror in one of the other places to see something, but I don't know if I need that for here. I suppose I could go and have a look for it again. Where was that? I thought for the most part these puzzles were all self-contained within their own levels. Uh, hmm. Let's see, mirror, mirror. I 
had a mirror or glass and I think it used it back in the temple of Agrippa. I think I could pick it up again, so... As well try that again. Over here. Okay. Picture of Alexandria. We read all this. Uh, this is... Well, yeah, there was this mirror here. That was what I was thinking of, I suppose. But I don't think we need that. That's a straight-up mirror. I can't, like, place that over the top of it. Because I can't see through that. Apparently this place is underground? Because I did read that it said the underground temple of Agrippa, but uh, I wouldn't know. It doesn't look like it's underground. Okay, well, I suppose let's go back there. we've seen this so now we're back did i miss something outside again heat and light transform the world maybe that's relevant i've got to close the blinds If that's the case, do I have to, uh... Do one of these, which is like, it's night time. Call for duty, call to prayer, wake up, call to meals, fire alarm, evasion attack, the seventh bell. Got to keep trying until you get it. Have I got to close the door? I can't close the door. What 
these candles here looking suspicious, but since I'm hunting for a solution, everything's looking suspicious. I'm going to save. And let's see. Poor I'm pretty Wonder. sure. Don't give up. Your goal is close and the rewards are great. The, uh, let's see. I know what I need to do. I just have to find... the item which allows me to do what I want to do. Walk around. Oh, okay. I think we've actually missed a room. Poor wanderer, don't give up. Your goal is close and the rewards are great. Yeah, okay. I think it's happened a few times in this that we've missed a room. Something which could be maybe uh, presented a bit more obviously. We go up here. I think it's up here and go over here and over here there's a room here there's actually a whole bunch of rooms brother ben but yeah brother Kilius. Alexandria. Can we see any of these others? Brother Steve. Huh. Okay. Okay. This is a nice room. Chapter 7, of which there is no cure. Uh, what's this say? But first, Mage 7, 19, 922. Dear Father, I have investigated all the texts I can and researched the e researched extensively your disease. There is no known treatment. Sartorius. Dismember 15. Oh, Dimember 15, 922. Dear Father, you must accept the death that will come, come for all of us someday. Perhaps you would like to be included in my experimental work. There are certain risks, of course. Sartorius. We did say Sartorius was saying he was looking to continue his father's work for finding the uh, Philosopher's Stone, the key to eternal life, and apparently it seems like Father Melvo has an uncurable disease and wishes and doesn't wish to die. So he took Sartorius up on his request. Dear Father, 
I am encouraged by your zeal in finding the quintessence. I do not mean to be discouraging, but alchemists have searched for ages for the Philosopher's Stone. I have come to see that the quite quint quintessence oh, quintessentia can be created by one person. There are four elements we must master, and four metals we must purify. Much as we have found the other, we must search out two others who have the will and courage to take on this study. Okay. That's from Sartorius. So, from that, Sartorius, Melvo, and then Cain uh, and Sophia. Okay. Chapter 7, of which there is no cure. If the condition worsens, if the boils blacken, the fever climbs, and the skin begins to fester and pus, then the alert physic must keep a vigilant watch for the spread of the spreading of the tumours. If the tumours spread from one quarter of the body to another, then the disease can be diagnosed as systemic. Which is to say, the interior cavern of the body is also riddled with growth, various and maligned. If this is indeed the case, there is no cure. Upon desiccated human flesh, the well working of the physic can amount to no appeasement, and the... Does it like the Black Death or something like that? Okay. He seems to be getting up and walking around all right, even considering that. Scales. What good is a top if it cannot spin? What use is a key without a keyhole? What purpose is there in bathing a ball? What is the color of fire to a hungry lion? What point is there to in bellowing about the heat? Hmm. It's very blurry without this. Let's take that. What's over here? Dearest Melvo, you will be glad to know Alexandria is flourishing here. She has a gift of that, I'm certain. I have given her books on the harmony of the spheres, and I believe she hears the notes in her dreams. Such a queer little thing. I see how she has won your heart, old monk. This is a difficult process. At times I am uncertain. I don't know how hard to push, but I will not let you down. Such strange parents we make, Sophia. Melvo, our plans may be falling apart. Alexandria has, I believe, fallen in love with Lucian. You remember Cain, you remember Cain's son? Nothing we do seems to have any impact on them. As if they were under some strange spell, you must put a stop to it. She has come so far with her music. Act quickly, or will it all have been for nothing? Sophia. Okay. On Immortality. Melvo, I am familiar with the old school of alchemy. They believed that pure love was the fifth element. My father and I have refuted that naive, albeit charming philosophy. Read this. Yes. Yeah, he was convinced that it was blood. Uh, all compacts made with the implementers are dependent upon human agency. So reads the binds of the mortal from the first book of Yorick. If thou dost not hearken upon our vo voices, we will afflict thee with hot and seething fever. Seating fever. If thou dost not keep our many thousand commandments, we will make the lunatic an effect with a heavy spirit. If thou dost not observe what is observable, we will dissolve thee with palsy, so that the enterprises are hunt hindered, and thy mouth stopped that thou canst not speak. If thou dost suffer thy magic to do our will, we... Okay. Is he scaring him with this book or something? To get him to do what he wants? Hmm. I tell you, he's watching everything we do. I can sense it. He's dangerous. And he'll do anything he can to get what he wants. Our only hope of survival is to give him our secret. Have you gone mad? I don't want to die. We can't give in to him. He's insane. We must be strong. We can't cave in to this, this nemesis. Okay. Well, for his biggest concern seems to be not dying. Nemesis was around for a while and they trying to figure out what to do about it. Mm, is that like a 
What is that thing? It's like a baby rattle? Looks like awfully big. Can't read those. Okay. Draw the will. Brother Melvo. Oh, that's up to his bedroom. Oh, that's why his door won't open, because it's been boarded shut. That is... That is impressively boarded shut. <laughs> like, no bones about it. And you'd wonder, why would they just do it, like, all willy-nilly? Just, like, planks across... Eh, yeah, whatever. It doesn't necessarily make it harder. You just take one off and they'd all fall off. Whatever. Where was... Alexandria's bedroom. We saw a door with her name on it. Here we go. <laughs> Babies. <laughs> Stop that. Okay. Babies. Uh, let's see. Oh, flashback time. Your music was lovely, Alexandria. Like the harmony of the spheres. Then why does it make you so unhappy? I was thinking how much I'm going to miss it when you've gone. Why can't you visit me at the conservatory? I can. And since I'm never getting married. Oh, you're sure? Your destiny is a nunnery. I can come back here and play for you. <laughs> and cheer old and feeble and totally deaf. Forever and ever. I'm in my child. Hmm, okay. This? What's this? Alexandria Wolf. Dear Dark, I wonder where my mummy is. All I have left of her is this locket. Father says if I am good, I will get to see her one day in heaven. Is that all? That is all. Okay. That's a picture of that, uh, miracle on the wall. Hmm. Harmony of the Spheres, Concerto. Anything else in here? I don't think so. Nothing underneath the pillow. Over here. Couldn't see that. Nothing in the mirror. No, reflection again. We truly are a vampire. Okay. Well, we've got this mirror. So, let's go back up into Melvo's bedroom and uh, use this on the uh, book. So that we can see the uh, solution to that skull puzzle. Over here. I'm glad that section of the house, of this monastery, is a lot quieter. Okay, let's see. So, uh, 
It is. Forward. To the left. Diagonal right. Diagonal left. And then right. over this way, wasn't it? I do like this place. I wish we could see the uh, actual 3D models which they use to make this off. Okay. Go down here. Here. Demon's gone because we used the shield. And now we just need to. That one was forward. That was left. That was there. That was there. That was there. And voila. Okay. Hmm. Devices. Let's see. What's this thing do? Oh, would it like dunk something? Is that supposed to be water? I suppose so. What's this? Uh, this is the work of the alchemist. Earth and air, fire and water, the endless battling of elements, fixed and volatile, yet not the one can exist without the other three held fast. So must it be with the great eclipse, where the moon holds the sun fixed and the two warring rulers of the cosmos marry in conjoined harmony. Male to female, gold to silver, king to queen, and the quintessence governs all. Okay. And I got this pretty rad looking lion dog here which seems to be eating a snake or something okay oh. yoink yoink key in there. That in there. Hey! Molded it into a sphere. Okay. Ooh. All the lava. Ah. Okay. So there's different flames there. I'm gonna have to go up to Melvo's bedroom again. Because. If we remember, there was that painting over his bed of the different flames, and I need to get the colours which they are. I know the first one was blue. And then it was like going through different heats, or different colours. Come, come on. Go up here. Go over here. Up here.
I just keep going this way because I don't know. It's fun. Way. Okay, so let's see. What is this? It is. Blue. Orange. Or maybe yellow. Red. Or dark red. And it's like orange and then white or it's like light red oh, it shows up a bit easier on my other monitor so it's yeah blue yellow red orange and white to me the um on my the monitor i'm looking at this on these this looks like a dark red this looks pretty much like a red but on my other monitor which is brighter uh, but it's a bit too bright it's actually much more clear anyway uh we had to go over this way back downstairs would be nice if maybe we had a map to travel around a bit faster these places aren't that big, so it's not too big of a problem. Okay. And we've got two fiddle with this. So it was blue. Uh... Yellow, and it was red, and then orange, and then it was white. Sphere in there. Apparently, we don't. So I have to put this over here first. There we go. I don't know what that did. <laughs> I find that's a part of a, that's a bit of a problem in this game. You don't know what things do. Like there's not books explaining what this is doing. Rather, it's just a bunch of apparatus which is making a metal. But I don't know how or why it's doing that. Or through what process it's achieving that. Bloop. Pull it down, and it turns into the uh, alchemical symbol. Ta-da! As I said earlier, I believe a lot of the development of this game was spent on creating the engine, so they had to sort of cut down on uh, other parts of the game because they were nearing the uh, completion time. Bloop. Now what's this going to say? Okay, he got spiked. How's it going, my lad? Ah, bless you. Your wanderings in my world have stirred many memories. You must understand, we meant no harm. Alexandria was my child. I thought I was saving her from Lucienne and from a hasty marriage, protecting her destiny. 
but I couldn't protect her from the nemesis. He was obsessed with our knowledge. I now know I was wrong, but I never got to tell her. I never got to say goodbye. Surely, this must be hell. There is a way to bring them back, but we need the four metals. Please, let me have one last chance. I mean, okay, but she wasn't really your daughter because we know that she was Um, she was, well, last metal. Uh, she was created by Sartorius. Uh, well, not created. She was a product of artificial insemination by Sartorius in his asylum. And yeah, it's like, hmm, to what purpose? Apparently, creating someone who embodies these embodies this a spirit, pure spirit or something. So she obviously has a purpose and was given to Belvo to be brought up in a way which would keep her spirit pure for some end purpose they have or they had. Then, then she fell in Alexandria, fell in love with Lucian, which I suppose was going to break their uh, or was going to foil their plans for her so they wanted to stop that um and then we saw Cain got Lucian and arrested him Alexandria don't know what happened to her and then they all got killed by the nemesis who apparently wants their elemental knowledge. Hmm. Okay, well, off to the uh, other place, which I think is this one. Hold on, let me just have a look. This one. This is Jupiter. That one's Mars. This one. Oh, Mars. Jupiter on Mars. Okay, and we're at the conservatory. After we just flown over flood control dam, apparently flood control dam seven by the number on it, but I'm pretty, I thought it was supposed to be flood control dam three, which is the one which is in uh, Zork one. Yeah, oh well. This place is nice. Though there's a big gaping hole in the side of the building. For some reason. What's this? Uh, 
Uh, musical instruments. Okay, well, that's a violin. I've got a saxophone. Okay. A drum. Oh, I don't want to pick it up. Thank you. I think, yep, there's some more over here. Okay. like a double-ended accordion? An oddly twisty horn. And some kind of like harp guitar instrument. Okay. What's this? Oh, it's a uh, record player. Okay, well, there's no record in it. What's this say? What, Misa? Get a raglini, probophone. Violin, Nambino, Miano, Fleasel, and Popper Keg. Okay. Well, the violin was over there. What the other ones are, I have no idea. Zorkian instruments. this huh harmony of the spheres okay some show they were going to have on It's a piano. What? I was just randomly pressing it. Oh. <laughs> Apparently this is an electric keyboard. I heard something drop out, drop down inside of it. A key. On Music and Perfection by R. Flood. Znopf Publishing. The violin, the most soulful of the orchestral instruments. The fleasel is a wind instrument with a medium pitch. That's it. Saxophone type thingy we saw. The Nambino is an Antharian percussion instrument. The Popper Keg is a small percussion instrument. And apparently that's where it ends. So we don't know about the other four. But we've got four of the instruments. Okay. Mixer of Alexandria again. A tuning fork. We'll take that. Nice lamp. It's a fireplace. It's got it's bricked up. Surely it must be a secret passage. <laughs> uh draws. Orga 14th. 
9.35. Sophia, it is rainy and grim here. The fields are muddy and littered with corpses. I am tired of all this. All I want in the world is to return to my castle. The battle at Flood Control Dam number 678 was more brutal than I expected. Elrond, backed by the Enchanters, has discovered some magical scroll which causes weapons to turn to fudge. It is disheartingly, disheartening and sticky. Liz wrote that she is considerably, considering spending the fell, fall at her mother's villa in Antharia. Say the word and I will further convince her to make the retreat to the restor restorative island climb for her health and for her health, you know, and for mine. Mean. Sophia, you, sit, you say I seem wrathful. I, that and far beyond. I am close to giving up on my son. Lately, Lucian has become suspicious, nearly paranoid, searching my room, pilfering my private papers. I am at a loss. He is in love with that girl, your precious prodigy, I know, and nothing I say will stop him. You say to be forceful, and I try, but he is my only son. It is hard for me to deny him that which he wants most. So, what then? Okay. Uh, Mumbember 14, 440. 9, 940, I think it is. Yes, and so the holidays pass, and still we are nowhere near each other. Liz and I are fighting again, which does dampen the festivities somewhat. It is not that she questions my formal loyalties to her and my family. She knows I will never leave her, but I suppose I can hardly blame her if she feels my heart is no better than any. How I hate to discuss these matters, as if it were, as if I were a gossiping girl. I live where I live, and I love whom I love. Praise Yorick. That is all there is to say on the subject. Madam Hamilton, I have refilled your black gas lamp. I also took the liberty of cleaning your lamp key slot. You should keep your key in your slot, madam, because there was all kinds of dust and dirt in there, and that's no good. There will be a Zork mid for this week and one for last, if you don't mind. You were playing some nice today. Keep practicing. Sincerely, Brog. Paid. Okay. What about in here? Dear Sophia, the time has come. I think you will be proud of me when you see her. She is a charming, brilliant child, and I have grown to care for little Alexandria as if her parenting were my only office. Her music, her music is unschooled, but I hear it in... I hear in it somewhere the harmony of the spheres. It is there for you to distill. I expect much work and great things from the both of you. Fondly, Molvo. Dearest Madame, I have much unsettling news. It has come to my attention that Lucian Kane, with his troubled rebellious spirit and his strange disposition, has been bothering Alexandria. Under your own roof, madame. I fear she knows little of the ways of men, who are not monks, that is. Please, you should know better than I. Alexandria needs to study and perfect her art, Father Melo Melvo. Uh, dear Sophia. Dr. Sartorius is a brilliant man. This experiment will be the biggest breakthrough since the beginning of Zork. If you are still interested, make your way to the Temple of Agrippa, but take great care and do not speak of it. There are those who misunderstand alchemy, those who would kill for our secrets in their search for gold. Father Melvo. Dear Sophia, I have had some success supersaturating liquids in the generation of large crystals. It appears small crystals are ideal seeds for growth. I feel this combination of water and earth, heated with fire and burning with air, will provide fertile new avenues for our venture. Sartorius. Sophia, your concerns about the purity of my crystal generation is well founded. I think I have the solution. It involves the dissolving of white calcium bromide, which has the added benefit of settling my acid indigestion when I am in the lab. Sartorius. Okay. Hmm. Okay, well, we put the lamp on. That do anything? Apparently not. I don't see anything there. Uh, go around here. Yeah. 
It was lagging a bit there. What about here? Nothing. I suppose that's a picture of the conservatory and it's being constructed. Looks like the dam in the background is actually just a series of like waterfalls or something. The whole area is a lot more flooded than it looks like there. Zork Musical, Ac Musical Academy for Girls. General Thaddeus Kane, principal founder. Ah, oh, he founded this place. Too late. We're closed. Sorry. Thanks for coming. Bye bye. Okay. You got anything else to say? Show? Here? <laughs> Where have you been all your life? <laughs> Show. Yeah, right. That's a good one. Okay, I suppose they're not having any performances at the moment. There's a door here. Practice. Oh, that's back out here. Okay. Fine. Well, we did find some of these instruments. But let's see, I think the violin goes there. And I forget what the other things are. I think this was the popper cake? We're gonna have to put all these instruments into their proper place. If I can ease leave this. Thank you. Okay, you have to turn around. Okay, go over there. Do I have to do them all at once? No, I don't. Okay, pick up drum. What drum? There was it? No, it was up in the back. You go over there. Okay. I'm gonna have to go back and forth between that book and uh, see the other two. One of them was the horn and the other one was I think that odd shaped, uh, not the horn, the uh, sort of saxophone thingy and the other one was like that odd shaped tube thing. I think. We'll get these ones done and then we'll find out about the other ones later on. Uh, the fleasel. Okay, so the saxophone is the fleasel. Oh, that's a popper cake. Okay, Nambino is that. Okay. So, let's swap that around. It was... This is the popper keg. That goes over there. This is the Nambino. And the Nambino goes. I mean, popper keg just seems like what this is called. It looks like a keg. Nambino is there next to the violin. And the fleasel was over there. Yes, yes. Okay. There we go. Did I have that right? Hold on. Let me just go back and check once more. I think... Whether I'm jumping to conclusions on one of them or...
Uh, yes. Okay, I have the right instrument. Okay, can we see something over here? What about this? Violin. Okay, it's a sheet of music. Oh, there's a key in that lamp as well. What's that note? I think we've already solved that. What's over here? Boiler room. Room. <laughs> it's locked. What's upstairs? Is locked. Nice. That'd be great, especially if it was raining. To see all the rain coming down the windows. Mumbember twentieth, nine twenty-four. Sophia, Doctor Sartorius is a strange but fascinating man. As you know, I am not prone to dabbling into strange self-indulgent philosophies or womanish new age experiments, but there is something to the man of that there can be no doubt. And still I wonder, Knight, might the Doctor's way be the only way of securing power in this perpetually unstable world? I could have a great use for him and his Philosopher's Stone in my campaign against the Enchanters. I cannot hold them back much longer. Say nothing, I will write you of this further, Kane. Madame Sophia, you are right. We cannot wait any longer. We must take a risk. Meet me at the Temple of Agrippa. I will summon the others. What has... La... What has... Begun must take its course. It is our only chance before we are destroyed. Sartorius. I like how the text is actually overwriting the, the letter. It's expanded off the uh, page. Uh, what's this say? Dear, dear Madame Sophia, while we have never been formally introduced, I feel as if I've known you for years now. At least I know many things about you. I know you sleep with my husband. I know you're the you're only one of his many mistresses. Or did you think that he loved only you? Has he been teasing you with talk of your future of marriage? Did you imagine he would leave me for you and you would rule Iron Dune as the next Lady Kane? Let me assure you, madame, that you have no future with my husband. He needs me, my family, and our lovely money. Without me, there is no Iron Dune, and there is nothing, and no one he loves more than that. Elizabeth Kane. Okay. No, a bath. Are we gonna have a bath? I'll have him not. I'll have him. I'll have him not. You're making me wild. As wild. As your two young mistresses. <laughs> Only two. <laughs> I have eyes everywhere. I know all your game. I should beat you for your impudence. <laughs> I should beat you for your faithlessness. <laughs> but I don't care. Because you and I are going to be together forever. And when your mistresses are old and... Lust is just a dim memory, and all they care about is finding food soft enough for their toothless gums. We'll still be just like this. Just like this.
Okay. A bit more motivations behind their apparent search for the Philosopher's Stone for immortality. Alchemy. Thoughts from El Resorki. Jumbo books. That the whole of astrology is an art musical which reflecteth the operations and effect of the music effects of the musical note, the pure sound, the subtle light, the secret influence of the harmony of the stars and planets dwells in every element of all the music of the spheres, that this is the greatest. Only the one harmony of the spheres has the power to hold and fix the celestial influences, to keep them from recoiling back into their divided inanimate spheres. In this simple way of nature is the mastery is to be attained. But what is the harmony, and how is it to be discovered? There is in music a certain melody, a singular array of notes, which, when played with a pure hand, applies itself to matter. By this art may the one spirit be unified to the universal, and cause a chain of perfect effect and proportion. But the magical properties of the music of the spheres draws equally from the perfection of musical proportions. The string of the instrument is the limpid spirit of man, extending from the implementers to the earth and partaking of both extremes. Musical notes that lie along this string note, string note, to string note the stages of the spirit as it descends into the corpus and climbs back to the implementers after death. If this scale is played in the order true and destined, d uh, true and designed, the limpid string passes through terra, aqua, air, ignis, and their corresponding notes, C, D, E, B. The order of the elements is the order of those notes along the string, the harmony of the spheres. When the musician hears the harmony of the spheres, uh, let me just write that down since it wrote it. C, D, E, B going to be a pain because it's been ages since any of my musical ins musical uh, practices C D E B da 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 okay pretty much I mean am I gonna have to look at like a keyboard or something Ugh. Paintings. I mean, most of my lessons have revolved around do re mi fa so la ti do. Anyway. Uh, is there anything else here? Journal on the bed? No. Was there anything in this little box here? Nope. Okay, that seems to be all in there. Go down here. Hmm. Uh. I have to wonder whether the key's not working is like part of it or it's just bugging out. What's this? The charge of the Yipple Brigade, performed by the Frobos Philharmonic Orchestra. Oh. 
Platedia Overture for Rack and Pendulum. Johann Sebastian Flatted. Harmony. Ha oh, harmonica hits for the. F oh, for the. Aim? Relive the 30s. Sophia Hamilton plays the blues, piano love songs. Introduction to the orchestra. Like. Alexandria Wolf. Uh, debut album. Okay. have got a uh, record player over here. Let's see this one first. Alexandria, that was lovely. But, as we all know, no concert is complete without the standard Zorkian conclusory fanfare. Hit it, boys! <laughs> I'm pretty sure that last part is is rather important. It'd rather stand out a bit. Okay. Pick that up. And let's have a look at this other one. Wind, wind. It's probably going to cover a whole bunch of the instruments which we've been looking at. Since 732 GUE, the Frobos Philharmonic Orchestra has consisted of nine instrumental sections that align to form a crescent moon shape, filling half of the Zorchestral Amphitheater. The violin, the most soulful of the Zorchestral instruments, sounds a rich, plaintive melody when the bow draws across its fine platypus gut strings. Lesser strings are made from hunger's gut, which, though economical, has a pungent scent which many find distracting. Platypus. The Nambino is an Antherian percussion instrument that draws its design from the steel shipyard drums of the port of Marba. Its thundering notes amplify as they resonate through the four apertures or nams of the drum casing, creating a droning overtone. The Miano is a type of Acadian lyre that has sometimes been employed by conjurers for use in musical incantations, 
or alternately for line dancing at guild socials. <laughs> when plucked with a piano stick, the lyre sounds rich, deep notes, usually in a minor key. The fleasel is a wind instrument with a delicate high pitch that fluctuates as air is pushed past its reed to a series of brass fleasel valves. A long-time court favourite of Lord Dimwit Flathead's, the fleasel was once sounded 300 times in a single meal at Flatheadia Castle, where it announced the arrival of the 299 next courses. Oh, this is the, the accordion one. is a two-player folk instrument which requires one player to play the keys and another to pump the bellows, thus producing a disjointed harmonic blast, a wurt miser or worst marriage. Originating in the rural divides of the frigid river valley, this unsophisticated, unwieldy instrument is the least respected member of the orchestra. <laughs> okay. The ancient Gedereglini horn sounds its strange hollow timbre as two players blow from either end at once, varying pitch as they cover and uncover the horn's many apertures. The Gedereglini is sometimes referred to as the lover's horn and is ceremoniously played at most Zork weddings. The Frobophone, first introduced as accompaniment to the Borfi Metropolitan Opera, is a deep, twisted-sounding horn which plays off the high-pitched fleasel in most orchestral movements. It should not be confused with the Homer Frobophone, which is not played at all, but used instead to beat upon flatheads in an attempt to broaden their minds. <laughs> the popper keg is a small percussion instrument which emits a thumping sound when slapped with a hand. As the keg clasp is moved rhythmically back and forth along its tubular body, the popper keg's pitch raises and lowers. The popper keg is popular among the very young and those who refuse the commitment of a two-player instrument. Most orchestras employ four of each of these eight instruments. Their proper placement within the Zork orchestral layout is critical to the success of the concert. The four other instruments of Zork, the verni, the umba, the bass chocophone, and the piano, are not considered part of the Frobos Philharmonic Orchestra. However, these instruments are popular within the Empire's alternative music scene, which includes such groups as The Cruel Puppets, Gru in Chains, Cursed Day, and Sound Dungeon. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> uh. Okay, so I got some of those. Let's just stop that. Okay, were we all paying attention? So, let's see. That's G. Probophone. Fleasel. Piano. And Bino and Wurtmiser. Okay. Violin does rather stand out, as it? Well, it's like, hey, we had to have our play, put, we had to have our actor playing something. <laughs> we can't just make up these instruments. Okay, so. Wurtmiser goes over there. Uh. say this is a frobophone so this is probably where it goes over there this is the piano goes there there we go that was the Gerald Gardini
Have you learned nothing under my tutelage? The notes are C, D, E, B, G. Their cadence is the harmony of the spheres. Okay. Are you with us today, child? Concentrate. C, D, E, B, G. How can you forget the notes? Without the harmony of the spheres, there can be no purity of the soul. Hell is music lessons. Okay, let's go. And I think I might call it here. For tonight for this. Uh Well, as if I'm going to have to start using a piano. Yeah. I don't know. My, uh... Knowledge of the keys on the piano is... Terrible. At the moment. Uh... So yeah, we did that. Does that open up here? Other side. Nope. Okay, I keep looking over here because I'm pretty sure some tickets show up here at some point. And we need the tickets to get into the uh, show. But uh, yes, I am going to save it here. And we'll continue with this next time. I'll go save over here. And three. I don't know if there's actually that much left of the game, but uh, now yeah, we've gone for two and a half hours, so I like keeping things at least about uh, under three hours for things like this. And yeah, we've gotten two more of the uh, elemental metals, and we're on our way to getting the uh, fourth elemental metal. And I can't remember how much more is after that. I don't think there's much after this. So yeah, overall the game is not really that long, I don't think. Puzzles aren't terribly complicated, as I said earlier, but, you know, time constraints and all that. But anyway, oh, well, thank you all very much for joining me. And we're going to get talked at by the, uh, by the, uh, portrait of Venus. Poor wanderer, don't give up. You're yes, yes. I gotta cut you off right there. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, and I hope you'll join me again next time.